Good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Today, I have just received my new issue of uh, Respiratory Care, and uh, boy, is it kind of a blockbuster of a of a journal this month. Uh, so, I want to go ahead and I'll probably review a, a, a several um, of the components of this journal because it's just so uh, so information rich. Uh, so target rich with information, if you will. So this is from the October 2011, uh, volume 56, number 10, Respiratory Care. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reviewing um, one of the symposium papers. Um, and this is a paper, something that should be near and dear to us in respiratory care, and that is um, ARDS, or um, Acute or Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Uh, the name of the article is "What Is uh, a Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome?" This is um, authored by Jesus uh, Vier, M.D., Ph.D. Um, and basically, it starts out in the abstract. It talks about um, uh, the relationship of shock and sepsis uh, can cause a syndrome of respiratory failure. Characteristics of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. This has been known for decades, um, and we our our modern our modern definition or modern classification of ARDS is, is about 20, 20 years old or so, a little, little less than 20 years. Uh, we, we use criteria to define ARDS from uh, the 1990s. I believe 1994 is when we had a, a consensus statement, the European and American Council. Uh, so I, obviously I can't review the entire article in its entirety, but I can go ahead and uh, give you guys some of the highlights. So uh, <clears throat> since the... Uh, since the the time, and we're talking about really the 1960s, 1970s, we've kind of had a, um, a, a tentative definition of what ARDS is, and um, the the classic way that we define have defined ARDS. Uh, there's several classic um, uh, hallmarks, if you will, and that is, you know, is there a risk factor for development of ARDS? Uh, for example, sepsis, uh, trauma, pancreatitis, things like that. Do we have the presence of severe hypoxemia in spite of a high FiO2? Uh, do we have decreased uh, pulmonary compliance? Are there bilateral pulmonary infiltrates um, on the uh, chest radiograph? And is there a lack of clinical evidence of cardiogenic pulmonary edema? Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and review some of the, the causes. And we talk about um, there are direct causes and indirect causes of lung injury in ARDS. Uh, the direct causes a direct injury to the parenchyma of the lungs themselves, and these include things like pneumonia, um, aspiration, pulmonary contusions, near drowning, um, inhalation injuries, a fat home bli, and uh, re uh, reperfusion uh, injuries, like reperfusion pulmonary edema. Uh, some of the indirect causes um, include sepsis, multiple trauma, acute pancreatitis, certain types of drug overdoses, cardiopulmonary bypass, and even the, the transfusion of blood products. Obviously, that's not a less common. Uh, so, they go on to talk about, you know, how do we define ARDS, and, you know, do we have a really good working definition of ARDS, and, and do they put up a good argument that, you know, perhaps not. Perhaps we need to kind of look at how we define ARDS. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and talk uh, quickly about, uh, so... Now we're moving on to the 1990s. In 1994, uh, the American European Consensus Conference on ARDS uh, defined ALI or acute lung injury slash ARDS as as the following, and there are really four cardinal uh, criteria criteria that that, that they used. Um, that is acute and sudden onset of respiratory distress, um, bilateral infiltrates on on frontal chest radiography, um, absence of left a atrial hypertension. Uh, and this would be de this would be manifested by a uh, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of less than 18 millimeters of mercury, and the absence of, of clinical signs of left ventricular failure, and then uh, the presence of severe hypoxemia, and uh, this would typically be assessed by looking at the PF or the PaO2 to FiO2 uh, ratio that we we should all know and love, <laughs> uh, when we should all use it on our uh, mechanically ventilated patients too. Okay, so uh, then they go on to talk about, uh, the author goes on to talk about, hey, you know, um, you know, we probably need, you know, these, these, these are, are fairly broad and fairly nebulous um, ways, uh, techniques of defining, uh, you know, a, a very, very severe um, constellation of problems. Uh, I, you know, ARDS, it, it, ARDS is kind of a nebulous concept, and it's, you know, if you ask, 
a hundred people, uh, I you know I don't know what uh, you know what exactly you'd get, but you'd probably get several definitions of of what they think arts is, and and obviously a lot of these things that we talked about, you know, uh, bilateral infiltrates, you know, ground glass appearance, uh, PF ratios, um, you know, being very low, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, there there's a lot of variation in how people. How, is there an exact or a precise and accurate definition? And uh, so they go on to say, you know, an appropriate biomarker for early identification, diagnosis, or severity of lung injury should provide information for appropriate stratification of patients at risk for ARDS um, or, or a ALI at, at onset during the evolution and disease process. So ideally a biomarker. So now we're talking about are there some certain types of biomarkers? Uh, and this would be, you know, this could be uh, certain enzymes or uh, something on the lines of that, um, pro-inflammatory mediators and so on. Uh, but ideally the biomarker should be 100% sensitive, 100% specific, easy to measure in blood, exhaled uh, gas, or other biological samples, um, should be affected by treatment. If the patient gets better, it, it should change, and if the patient gets worse, it should change in a certain way. It should be a function of, of, of how, how well the patient how well off the patient is, and it should be ideally cost effective. Now, uh, this is obviously in um, the land of Oz that we're talking about. Uh, we don't have any biomarkers um, that meet these standards, but we should strive to get as close to these standards as, as, as possible. And then they go on to talk about some of the more recent studies of ARDS. So, you know, we're, we're aware of the ARDSnet study, um, and they actually did look at some uh, biomarkers uh, in their PEEP study. Uh, but there's some other studies, uh, and let's see here, Donnelly and al. Uh, found that patients at risk for ARDS who uh, had more interleukin-8 and bronchial alveolar lavage fluid uh, subsequently progressed uh, to ARDS. Um, in 180 patients with severe sepsis, uh, Viller and all found a direct correlation between liposaccharide binding protein um, level and severity of lung injury, which is, suggests that perhaps serial uh, polysaccharide uh, binding protein may be, may be a clinically useful biomarker for identifying patients at risk for worse outcomes. Okay. Um, also, uh, there, there, they actually talks about s several other studies. Uh, a study where wet, uh, where and all uh, anabolize a combination of eight biomarkers that reflect uh, epithelial and ep ep endothelial, excuse me, and epithelial pulmonary injury, inflammation, coagulation in about 550 patients with ARDS. Um, uh, the network, uh, this is the ARDS network trial of low versus high peak that I talked about earlier and some other, other trials. Um, so we have biomarkers, and, and there, we're making some progress there is, is, is basically what I'm getting from that. Um, their propo proposed new definition of looking at ARDS, um, at least through this article, is um, the clinical condition. A known predisposition uh, clinical condition exists. There's an acute onset. We have bilateral pulmonary infiltrates consistent with a permeability pulmonary edema on chest radiography. The patient needs to be intubated. The PF ratio is less than 200 millimeters of mercury on an FiO2 greater than 5, 50% uh, or 0 0.5, PEEP greater than 10. Um, exclusion of, of left ventricular failure. Uh, however, left atrial, um, or atrial hypertension can coexist. Um, we still want to look at a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of less than 18 and no clinical signs or symptoms of left ventricular failure. And then biochemical diagnosis, ideally plasma levels of some specific biomarker of lung injury above certain threshold values. Do we know what those threshold values are at this point? I don't think so. Um, but, but really what this study shows is that, you know, in 20 years we haven't made a whole lot of progress on defining, uh, defining ARDS a little better. And, and now we're starting to find that, that there are some biomarkers that do indicate that are allowing us to start to stratify um, injury, is severity, and, and perhaps make uh, guesses on outcomes. Um, the current definition was, of course, established almost two decades ago. We need a better definition, and it would be very helpful to incorporate uh, the new definition of specific biomarkers of lung injury. So uh, basically what this says is, hey, look, there's some new things uh, coming out and we need to look at them closely and, and perhaps uh, with with additional studies uh, we can redefine uh, what it is to be in ARDS and obviously that'd be a very good thing uh, 
for patient care. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.